The entire purpose behind the spread hacker within Thinkorswim is to filter through the millions of options out there and hopefully refine it to a very small list of spreads that we might actually want to trade. You'll probably end up finding this tool to be a little bit more difficult to use than the basic stock hacker or option hacker, so I'll be sure to go through it every step of the way. And hopefully by the end of this thing, you guys should leave here feeling absolutely comfortable with how it can be used and some basic criteria of what you guys might want to scan for. Now, beginning with a few of the very unfortunate limitations of the tool right now, to begin with, you guys will not be able to save any of the scans that you create in here. Now, the filters themselves that we add down here below will be here each and every time we log in, but we won't be able to save and access them like we can for the stock hacker or the option hacker. The second downside is the fact that we won't be able to access any of the other advanced filters, so things like study filters, stock filters, or fundamental filters. Now, there is a way you can get around this somewhat by creating a completely separate scan in the stock hacker and then cross-referencing this scan off of that one. So if you have some past scans that you've created and then want to use those as a base, what we could actually do is come up here to the drop-down menu. Then we could come down here to the personal section where we can actually access all of your past scans. Now, in my case, I only have one scanner in here, the stock dividend PE scanner. But if I were to click on that, this scan that we now create in the spread hacker will also cross-reference the one that we created in the stock hacker. So again, it's not perfect, but it is a way to get around the fact that we can't use the advanced filters directly within the spread hacker. Now, before we actually dive into the filters themselves, the very first thing we need to specify is what type of spread are we actually looking for? In order for us to do that, what we'll do is come up here to the search box and go ahead and click on that. From there, we can then see all of the spreads we can scan for down below. So that'll include verticals, butterflies, iron condors, and you'll notice it does not include everything. But in our case for today's video, we're going to refine it to just vertical spreads today. So let's go ahead and select that. Moving on from that, if we actually look at the very first filter I have here, we can see it's an underlying price filter, meaning I'm only looking for stock that trades somewhere between $15 a share on the low end, all the way up to $500 on the high end. Right below that, you can also see I'm looking for a probability of profit to fall somewhere between 65% to 80%. Now, probability of profit simply means the likelihood of us making at least one penny on this trade. And since we've set the probability somewhere between 65% and 80%, this will only be looking for short vertical spreads rather than anything long. Looking below that, we can next see our P&L margin, and that is simply looking at the total credit received and then dividing it by the max loss. So in this case, we're saying we're looking to receive at least 30% of the max risk on the trade. So for example, if the max risk on the trade was a dollar, that was the absolute most I could lose, we would only have results that pay a credit of at least 30 cents in our list here. Now looking right below that, you can also see I've got a days until expiration filter, so I'm only looking for spreads that expire somewhere between 20 to 60 days out in time. Then finally, looking right below that, I've got a mark price filter stating we only want to display spreads that are paying a minimum of 50 cents and no more than $6 on the top end. Now, to be honest, that top end number doesn't really matter that much, but the bottom end number is going to weed out spreads that just pay too little premium for it to be worth our time. Now, besides those filters that I've already added to my screen right now, if you guys wanted to add additional filters to this, you would simply come up here to add a spread filter, then look down here below in the drop down menu and you'll notice that it's pretty limited actually. There's not a whole lot of filters available to us directly in the spread hacker. So if you guys want to add more advanced filters, you're going to need to create it in the stock hacker and then cross reference this one to that one. So if you were looking for stocks with high volatility or maybe a certain dividend yield, whatever it is, you'd first need to create it in the stock hacker, then reference it off of that. Now, in my case, I'm actually perfectly fine with all the results here. So I'm actually going to delete this filter out of here. And what I'm going to do is actually come down here and hit scan to see what kind of spreads meet our criteria right now. So now looking down below, you can see a nice long list of spreads that meet all of our criteria right now. And remember, the way I set up my scanner, these are only going to be short vertical spreads. You guys will also have the ability to sort these spreads by certain metrics. Like, for example, if you wanted to look for spreads for paying the most premium up front, we could always come over here to the mark column. Go ahead and double click on that guy. Then taking a look at the very first result here, we can see it's going to be on AIN. It is a five point wide vertical call spread, and I'm going to be receiving $2.57. Looking over a little bit further to the right, we can see it does meet our probability of profit metric. So in this case, 70% and our P&L margin is over 100%. 
So right off the bat, it does technically meet all of our criteria, although I am a bit suspicious based off of that total credit received, it seems way too high. So what I wanna do is actually investigate this one a little bit further by simply right-clicking on it, then coming over here and selecting Create Duplicate Order. Looking down below in the actual order ticket, if I actually look at the natural price versus the midpoint, I can basically determine that this trade would never actually fill. This spread is actually a perfect example of what I warned you guys at the very beginning of this video. You guys will get results in here which have no realistic way of ever filling. So always keep that in the back of your mind. This tool is not perfect. And what we would simply do is just go ahead and delete this out of here and move on to the next one. Let's go ahead and actually unsort it by Mark. And let's instead take a closer look at one of these other guys here. So now looking down below, let's say I wanted to take a closer look at this AMAT call spread right here. I'm selling the 97 and a half, buying the 100. It says here we're doing so for a total credit of 58 cents and it's got a probability of profit of 75%. Let's go ahead and right click on that guy, go ahead and duplicate the order here. And looking here, this one has a far more realistic chance of filling. So right here, it's got a natural price of 45 cents, a midpoint of 58 cents. We might not be able to get that exact midpoint, we might have to give up a little bit, but at least this one has a good chance of filling. You guys could also apply this to other types of spreads like iron condors or calendars or diagonals, although you probably would need to make some serious adjustments to the filters. But I'm sure you guys get the general idea of it by now. Hopefully this was a good starting point for you all to better understand the spread hacker, but please let me know if there's still something on your mind. If you guys did find this video helpful, please consider hitting that like button down below to help out the channel. And until next time, have a great rest of your week, guys.